Save that for in a minute. Oh my gosh, there's 31 people here already. <sighs> Followed by deep stare. Don't do that. They'll see your pores. <laughs> Very porous. <laughs> so porous. You have such the big pores. Of large pores. Renee! Shalom. Shalom. Puzzleman, shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Puzzleman, we see you back. I'll just sit here and say shalom. 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 You just shalom all the people. Shalom. Shalom all the people. Shalom, y'all. I think I made this public. Right? This is public. Snake Docs here. Tenor Beeb. Let's see the compost teeth. The compost stare. <laughs> Warsaw, shalom. New England, shalom. Puka, shalom. Puka is here. I can't read from back here. I got to get shades. JR. Glasses. Glasses. Major victory. Shalom. Carrie, howdy, y'all. Still got flu. Stop that. Howdy from Utah. Howdy from not Utah. New Patreon here. JT, shalom. John Hishi, shalom, brother. What you drinking? What are you drinking, babe? I'm drinking Apothic Crush. Which is good stuff. That I stole from him. The last live stream. Yes. And I was at the store, and I was like, ooh. I'm going to get my own bottle. What live stream was that? That wasn't live stream. We were shooting Patreon videos. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah we were doing something. Yeah. With the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Dirt, shalom. And uh, I'm drinking Texas Ranger whiskey on the rocks, and it's delicious. Yum. <clears throat> See, I don't like sitting shalom. over here because I can't read. I need my glasses to read over there. So, you want to switch spots? Yeah, let's switch. I didn't actually want to switch spots. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> we could just sit like this. <laughs> what are y'all saying? This is the best show. I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan, shalom. She'll bear her face. Shalom, brother. I sent you a couple of emails. I don't know if you've emailed me back because I don't... <laughs> I send emails. I don't read them. <laughs> I have people for that. Because we're so fancy out here in the woods. Danky Dwayne. BRB going to grab some salt and caramel whiskey. Good for you, sister. Haven't looked yet. I don't blame you. It's all good. See, Hami has changed her tactical chicken hunting pajamas. We don't talk about that anymore. We don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good time. Um, Ulfidnar Tribesman suggested today that I get you a camo house coat. So that, yeah, you could go hunting in I that. I could go stealthy uh -huh. in my PJs. Yeah, stealthy pajama llamas. Guns and diesel, shalom, brother. So, what are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing? Um, all the words. Greetings and blessings from South Carolina. Shalom, Mike. These things, these are the best. I, I have permits for these, officer. Action Jackson. That was a great video. I don't know what you're talking about, man. It was a great video. Yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed filming that. That was a good time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You did good. Mm -hmm. I think um, Thursday you will see the aftermath on Patreon. So. So for all of those that aren't on Patreon, <laughs> T and I had a chicken shootout where we were calling ro roosters and we had a little friendly competition to see who who could get the least amount of shots to kill the roosters. Right. And I won. By a lot. By a lot. By a lot. <laughs> you had like six rounds fired. I had like 13 or 15 rounds fired. Yeah. Maybe more than that, but... Mm -hmm. Um, we'll just go with you had six and I had seven, so good job. <laughs> good job. Holly needs a tactical chicken patch. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to my patch guy. I'll see if oh, I can wait, get am one I made wearing up. my shirt? Yes, I am wearing my shirt. Don't take your shirt off on the internet, honey. <laughs> what? what are you doing? I was going to show him my shirt. 
Keep it PG. Here, I'll just turn it this way just for a minute. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. Just Sorry, it. everybody. Just got to pull it down. What is <laughs> Dookie Wilco, shalom. Michael Harris, shalom, brother. Okay. Can I get this? What does that say? Driving my husband crazy one chicken at a time. Yes. Yes. Our friends gave that to us, and uh, it's awesome. I love this shirt. Yeah. Because it's so true. <laughs> yep. Oh, hello from not Tennessee. So what are y'all doing tonight? At least she can hit a moving target. Shut up, Joe Dirt. Shut up. Shut up. Me too. I just need a 10-gauge, 3.5-inch Magnum <laughs> number 7 shot. <laughs> Playing with fire. Shalom, Moki Storm Chaser. Sounds like my wife. Copy. Oh, my goodness. Perfect. Anti-22LR for SHTF. Exactly. Right? And I'm telling you, several of those birds did have multiple holes in them. I cleaned them. I showed it on camera. You'll see it on Thursday on Patreon. Um, but the one... The one that she crushed, the red one, the first shot that you took, just was obliterated. That was a perfect shot. Just right here at the base of the neck, heart and lungs were just exploded, and it went, poof, just dropped. Didn't even, no wing flapping or nothing, just poof, down. The rest of them were kind of Swiss cheesy, and um, yeah, so... My wife can outshoot me. Ch ch chasing life. Shalom. <laughs> yeah, that first shot was <laughs> buckshot. Uh-huh. Um, CR Rough Riders. Just got back from Walmart. Shelves don't look as full as they typically do. I don't know where you live. It's now holy chicken copy. So it's something that, like, because I see this a lot with, like, Walmart stuff. Walmart only restocks certain days mm -hmm. so like i mean there's several times that i go to walmart and the shelves are like pretty much completely bare and then i go back the next day and they're stocked full mm -hmm. so a lot of people like use the walmart shelves are bare as like oh my gosh walmart's running out of no they're not they just haven't restocked yet <laughs> <laughs> it dip well here in other places like i don't know the northeast when it snows yeah i mean and everybody's like you know bread milk eggs so we can make french toast <laughs> the the quintessential <laughs> recipe of the snow apocalypse um you know you just everywhere you go all the staples are gone yeah. you know and it's like this is stupid um you know and i it that's a good point because a lot of people are like, yeah, but I'm on a fixed income. I don't have any money, so I can't really prep. But, you know, when something bad happens, I'm going to run to the store and grab a few things. I'm like, I have – I grew up poor, man, at times. We always had food. What we didn't have was fancy clothes or yeah. nice cars mm -hmm. or new shoes. But we always had food. Always had food. Um so that just blows my mind, especially living in upstate New York. You know, and like people who live in Maine, it's like you're preppers just because of where you live geographically. Yeah. Because it could snow and be four to five months before you go to the store again. So I don't know. I've just always kind of rejected that because I haven't seen it. So, but it does happen. People do do that when it's snowing, you know. Yeah, they do do that. Sleep dogs here. Shalom, brother. Ever anything you could not explain? I don't know how women work. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Clueless. Scarecrow, shalom. Does, Nami, does Hami knife hand better than you? <laughs> All right. Banned for life, Scarecrow. How dare you? Aaron Moore, shalom. Chris, paintball, soccer, BJJ. You have very interesting hobbies, Chris. I'm upstate New York. You are upstate New York? Wow. Earl's daughter's here. 
Shalom. When you live in Tornado Alley, you don't want to wait for a NATO to stock up. Wisdom or common sense? Agreed. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> Tell them nice things and feed them good food. Yeah, okay, you're right. I mean, I guess that's mostly how women work. Just got done punch dancing to Europe. Good for you. Hey, Nicole's here. Shalom, sister. Shalom. Try and survive. And yeah, the chat is moving, man. Um, yeah, try so reading it all. Try, okay, let's do this. Oh, wait. Why'd y'all do that? <laughs> Both at the same time. <laughs> I mean, bless you. Thank you, McCarty, Brian. And thank you. Not one more inch. Uh, prepping fuel, how much gas, diesel, propane, wood, etc. How can you store it? Copy. We'll add it to the list, brother. Prepping fuel. Prepping. I don't have a list. Prepping fuel, I said. I'm gonna, I don't have a pen, so I'm going to carve it into my forehead with the spider co, okay? Prepping. No, you have to write it backwards fuel. so you can read it. Okay. <laughs> my bad. Oh, yeah, I got a pen. Cool. How convenient. Prepping fuel, which is Hebrew for few of Yah. That's how you know. That's what the L means. Fuel. 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 Yeah. Few of Yah is what that means in Hebrew. Now you know. Ashton's here. I can't read it. You're banned for life. Remember Scarecrow? Um... Bear, Virginia updates and long-term ramifications across the board. I don't have any Virginia updates yet. I was just talking with a brother about this earlier today. And the conversation that we were having was, hey, isn't this a state's rights issue, this whole Virginia gun ban confiscation, SB 16, 1864 stuff? Um, and the short answer is, for me, unless something has changed, which I don't know, because uh, I am on a self-imposed low-information diet, so we will get to that in a minute. Um, it's not a states' right issue yet because SB 16, 18, and 64 are bills, not laws. If they become laws, then I would think that the supremacy clause would be in effect, meaning that the Constitution says that crap's illegal, so it doesn't matter what your states' right says. And then you get into a constitutional, you know, states' rights versus federal government argument, which I think is a good argument to have, I would push that argument hoping that we would get a Supreme Court decision saying that the supremacy clause basically states that if it's in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, you can't say, yeah, but I got a state law that says something else, which would mean that we could then backtrack all the other gun laws in the United States of America and get to nationwide constitutional carry, which I think would be cool. However, I don't know if we'd actually get there. So all that being said, right now, currently, we don't have a states' rights issue. What we have is our proposed bills in Virginia. If they pass, that's a whole nother story. If shots fly in Virginia, that's a whole nother story. Right now, we have the buildup to all of that. Unless something has changed, of which I've not been informed since about 10 a.m. this morning. Um, which is entirely possible. So, but that's what I got on Virginia. Um, only got and gun. Uh, well, I would love to. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Advice for prepping for what's your opinion? Constitutional, statewide. Dang it. <laughs> that's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would mean NFA would be scrapped. We were just talking about that at dinner. Would be scrapped for right now until administrations change again. And then what happens when they make all those cool NFA items retroactively subject to inspection yeah, again? Right. And then they're like, ha, I got you all, you conservatives. Now we're going to come and uh, no-knock inspect your suppressors and machine guns. And if you don't comply now, you're a felon caught in the act and we're going to take you to jail. So, anyway. Deport all the communists. To where? I'm just curious. I'm not saying I disagree. I'm just like, where are we sending them? China. China? Yeah. China. Tremendous. Cuba. Usar. Oklahoma worth the move. I can't say whether or not it is for you, but for us it absolutely has been. 
Let's riff on that a minute. What do you think about that, baby? Oklahoma is the place to be. Oklahoma. Farm living is the life for me. <laughs> <laughs> Where the wind goes sweeping down the plains. Um, no, I love it. I absolutely love it here. So I wouldn't change. Uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, there's lots of other places that I. Um, I also enjoy visiting. Mm-hmm. But as far as a place to lay my head at night, a place to do all the things, mm -hmm. Oklahoma is, in my opinion, one of the best. So, East Oklahoma, not West Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. That's flat. Well, or plateau-y. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not, not for me. I like the hills and the valleys and the mountains in the distance. Yes, Oklahoma has mountains in the distance. And the Washita Mountains. Yeah. Look it up. Although it's impossible to spell Washita. It's yeah. spelled Uachita. Pronounced Washita. <laughs> and nobody Uachita. and nobody can pronounce it. They're like, Are you by the Uachita? Ch yes. That's what we are by. Uchita. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Uchita. Shalom. Um the Washita's, which are the foothills of the Ozarks, which are, you know, they're all, everything's kissing cousins around here. It's just all kind of intermingled, which is why I came up with the term Arklatex Ahomas. So, but it's, it's great here. It's, you know, I mean, if I could live anywhere, I don't know, I'd probably still live here. In fact, I answered this question recently on Patreon. But man, I wouldn't mind having a home, you know, in Red Feather. Right. You know, northern Colorado on the Wyoming border. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. But the cool thing here is I can do whatever the hell I want. Mm -hmm. our, ta our property taxes for a year here are less than what they were for a month in Texas. Think about that. And Texas. Are getting buffered to death. I don't think we are. Um, Texas was a third of an acre. This is over 20 acres. So Eastern Oregon, North Colorado is a consideration. What up, homies? Dude growing season, right? Aaron Martin, shalom. NWA Prepper, shalom, brother. You know you want to live a little closer to me. Bro, we tried. We tried to live in Arkansas. We kept getting moved here. I was like, okay, yeah, I guess we live here now. In fact, my wife told me, because you and grandma came and looked at this property first, and then uh, she came home to Texas and was like, I found the place. And I was like, woman, you're just being emotional. No, you didn't. And she's like, yeah, it's the place. And I was like, we'll see about that. I'm going to go look at it. And I got here. I got one foot out of the truck, and the father just dropped a two-ton pallet of conviction on my head. And I was like, oh, I'm home. Copy that. Thanks, y'all. Mm -hmm. So... Here we is. Good place to be. Luke, howdy. So while I was in the service, we trained to study our opponents. So what are your thoughts on watching the debates as a study element to prepare for what's to come if heaven forbid they win? That's a great question, but I wouldn't look at the debates. That's too open source. That's all propaganda. You're getting into two, you know, 90 second to two minute sound bites there. What I would look at is what are, what are governmental elements and agencies training to combat. Aha. And I'll say this, look up the seven lines of effort for fighting an insurgency. PHL, shalom brother. Hey, I used your handiwork earlier today. I recorded no less than four classroom videos earlier today. Thank you, sir. Patagonia is the last frontier. I have no idea what the hell that means, but it sounds cool. Yankee survival, thank you. And because you gave us that dollar, I'm going to say it like this now. Patagonia is the last frontier. I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Shield bearer, bless you, brother. Thank you. I will check it out the moment that my phone is not occupied talking to the Internet. Bless you. 
And by the way, you're awesome, man. You really are. Uh, rubber band ministry is awesome. And um, for real, if you are into preparedness and you are into faith and you want a good voice in the community, you need to check out Shield Bearer of Faith. He's great. Good dude. He's been a long time supporter of the channel. How old are you? Old enough to know better, young enough not to care. NWA Prepper is here. Another good channel. Probably civil unrest in America. Not like this, Hacker Games. The Sasquatch Shalom, brother. Shalom. OFD. Uh, yes, sir, I do. I emailed you back. I'm hoping you got it. Yes, I do. Bless you, brother. Which iPhone you bear? Um... 10? No, they didn't have a 10. That's what this is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah. Oh. You have a 10? No. X. Yeah. It's the same thing. No. X is the Roman numeral for 10. But it's not X. I mean, it's not 10, it's X. I don't, whatever it is. I don't know. Does it matter? <laughs> Um, I believe I responded to you again, OFD. Um, shoot me another email and I will, um, respond to you. <laughs> Shalom, Badger. Somebody said we're adorable. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Carrie, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> so what do y'all want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Secret talk. I don't know. Secret talk? I don't know. Tim Dahl is here. Nicole is Somebody here. Somebody will ask us a question eventually. Yeah, probably. And it's probably going to be like, Bear, what do you think about when the reptilian overlords finally take over the House and the Senate and we all have to bow down to them and lick their weird reptilian toenails? Be like, eh, I'm not worried about that. We'll shoot them in the neck. We'll shoot them in the neck. You'll shoot them in the neck. Yeah. Next by spot, like remember when we went shooting the zombies? Uh huh. In Illinois, mine was all neck. I like zombie I hunting in Illinois. That zombie. <laughs> Bear less than a month, and I'm there-ish, close enough. You know where? Bless you, brother. That's awesome. It's on my name. Hold on, just go down. Oh, shalom. Paula Joe, I got your <laughs> card in the mail today, and all I can tell you is thank you, thank you, thank you very, very, very much. You're awesome. Uh, PJD made a, a sizable contribution to Grindstone today for our upcoming mission, and oh. thank you very much. You're freaking you. awesome. <laughs> Vicky Shalom, and I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, don't know what you're talking about. Vicky. She says, I love, Bear, how you beat your wife so badly in that rooster shooting competition. That was great. How much you shot better than Harmony. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what she said. Cool Breeze. I sent your freaking stickers. Throat punches with 556. Five, Where do you find population densities for current area? Hermit Hill Boys. Um... Look up Melissa data. You can also look up uh, a good way to back into that number is look up Wikipedia for the townlet ham, hamlet county you're in, uh, and it'll give you the overall population and the total square miles. Divide the population by the square miles. Thank you. I need more of the unicorn pooping rainbow stickers. Email me your address and I will hook you up. <laughs> Vicky says you're awesome. Thank you. What do you think about living in a yurt for a year just to practice? It hits the fan. Maybe just detoxing from all... You know, listen, man. If you feel called to live in a yurt, then maybe that's something you need to do. Um, I'm good on yurting, but... Although I still have a yurt set up in my backyard from Sukkot. That's his doghouse. I haven't been in it <laughs> since Sukkot, so I guess I'm doing pretty good. You are? I guess I'm doing yeah. pretty good. Lar bear, shalom. Wait, somebody else. Y'all, these are going by way too fast. The magic number for population density? I don't no. have one. I, don't know. I just can't. 
There's bamboo around the perimeter of my property. What about Trump selling American hay bear American triggers? So no bamboo. We have, well, I guess you might could call it. It's river cane. Mm -hmm. um, it's just some species of river cane that we have. But we don't have it like all the way around the property. We just have little pockets of it. Stay survived. I'm not a fan of 300 blackout, and it's not because it's not a good round, uh, especially in an AR pistol, if that's what you're looking at. It's probably the preferred round on a pistol length system over 5.56, five, but I hate it for two reasons. One, it's more expensive than 5.56, five, and two, if you're running 300 black and I'm running 5.56 five, and your weapon runs dry, I can't share with you, and you can't share with me. Um, so just for a logistics reason, I'm not a fan of 300 black. Unless everybody in your crew runs 300 black and you've literally got a pallet of it put away somewhere, then go for it. But it, honestly, a pistol and 300 blackout is more of a, frankly, a boutique item that's probably not going to be nearly as effective that, than you're going to want it to be, as you're going to want it to be. 5.56 five, with a 16-inch barrel. You can build one of those that weighs 6 pounds if you're careful with what you put on it. That's going to weigh as much uh, as a 300 black pistol is. So, And you're going to have a commonality of cal caliber. So, yeah. In fact, Pastor Joe just did a video today about AR pistols and efficacy of AR pistols. The muzzle flash, bad cheek weld, blah, blah, blah. I think they have their place, but I think the concept of building a boutique weapon to satisfy a pretty niche philosophy of use is not necessarily money well spent unless you're independently wealthy and you already have literal tons of food and several other AR platforms and you know everything there is to know about medical and your combo game is squared away and you are homesteading hardcore right now producing all of your food and you have all the tractors and implementations and fuel stored and your vehicles are squared away and you've got spider points, waypoints, map, land nav, blah, 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 then yeah, build a 300 black AR pistol. Uh, that's, I guess I've made myself clear on the subject. So, Action Jackson, bless you, bro. Somebody asked about Mission. It's in Oklahoma. It's in... Eastern Oklahoma. Yeah. And I will give you all the details on the email blast. So please make sure you are signed up for the email blast. It's coming this week. We're not giving away the precise location of the mission right now because uh, it's sensitive. The nature of the work that they do and the nature of the people that they rescue Suffice it to say that when you take what's unfortunately considered property uh, from scumbags, there's oftentimes a chance for retaliation. So we will be sharing the location of where we are working in that email blast. Um, and if you're interested, it's in eastern Oklahoma. And if you're signed up at bearindependent.com, go, go to doing good and there's a mission sign up tab at the bottom of that and that email blast will go out this week excuse me yes it's in eastern oklahoma roger mike eastern oklahoma any tips on setting up a mag um yeah step one is start what do you think from a female's perspective team building so <clears throat> Do you have people around you, like, even if it's just a few, do you have anyone around you that's like-minded, interested? If so, then do they know anybody that's like-minded, interested? And that's kind of how you, you build. And it starts with one person. That one person knows 20 people. Out of those 20 people, three might be interested in what uh in prepping those three know 20 different people than the 20 people that you know mm -hmm. and out of those 20 people four are interested so that's uh and a lot of it's just talking like i think preppers are really like scared to kind of come forward and start talking about things with people that they know it's because they don't know where to draw the line on 
Um, information exchange. Yeah, exactly. And, um, but I know that, like, we've met a lot of people just kind of in passing that they're like, yeah, yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of get it. And they may not be, like, hardcore, but they have an interest. And that's where, that's where you start is with that interest. And that's the relationship that you, you grow. <clears throat> and if all else fails, with the technology and reach that people have today, like, you can start a page, you can start a group, you can start an Instagram, like, you can start all this stuff and you can have people literally come to you. So, great points. Um, people, a lot of y'all are unaware that this channel started life as NTX Mag, the North Texas Mutual Assistance Group. The whole reason it existed was to find people in North Texas to form a mag with. That's why the email for this channel is ntxmag at gmail. So yeah, you can definitely use social platforms to attract like-minded individuals. Um, a lot of people are really concerned about building the right mag. Uh, it's impossible based upon my experience. Yeah. You got to build the right now mag. Who do you have right now? And then people are going to come. People are going to go. People are going to like making sure you have the perfect family. Like it's just yeah, it's just not live life. Happen. You're going to have that one bad uncle or that one obnoxious <laughs> aunt. Like it's just it's not going to be perfect. Yep. Double tap and hillbilly shalom, brother. Hey, I got your email. Bless you, brother. Thank you. This is how I'm going to answer emails from now on. I'm just going to let everybody email me during the week, and then I'm going to say thanks to everybody on <laughs> Tactical <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Snake Doc, you sure have been. Um, so, you know, and the other thing you got to understand is different people have different appetites for involvement, and they yeah. have different budgets, um, they, and they have different convictions. And so you build the team that you can with the people that you have right now. Once you do that and you start gaining some momentum, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. This channel, like I said, started as NTX Mag. I literally have a video from way back in the day called Woohoo 27 Subs. It's not, how long ago was it? Three years? No, no, not even. Less two than years. two years. Less than two, two years. Two years ago. Woohoo 27 Subs, okay? So, and still, I'm like, yes, 27 subs, awesome. And then I did a follow-up video, woohoo, 27,000 subs, because that blew my mind. Um, you know, and at the rate we're going, by the hand of the Father, it may be a few more months, it'll be woohoo, 127,000 subs. But once you get your momentum going, your vibe attracts your tribe. People seeing you living your life and not operating out of fear, just trying to be a good, kind person and help the people around you and take precautions to be prepared and they gravitate towards that. And see, the way that we live our life is that we're not loud about it, but we're not unashamed either, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not like, oh my God, we're preppers. Don't right. tell them. Like, There's OPSEC for sure, but you know, when you let somebody into your life, sooner or later, they're gonna get it figured out. And if, if they see that you're normal in every other regard, you love your creator and you're good to your children and you have, good, strong interpersonal relationships and you're into preparedness, mm -hmm. it takes the stigma off of preparedness. If you're like... Well, I think positivity. Like, a lot of preppers are like super doomsday. 12 reasons the zombies are going to rape your dog. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, like, thanks, bro. You can listen to that, but you don't want to like only listen to that. And it's very <sighs> Debbie Downer. Yeah. And so, yeah, like positivity goes a it lot shades. further than negativity. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Yeah. It, it just it just does. You know, if all you talk about are tinfoil hat conspiracy theories that may or may not be true, people are going to think you're crazy. It's a fact. And then 
when you try and evangelize about preparedness, something that could save somebody's life in the real practical, tactical world that we live in. And I go, I'm not listening to that guy. He was trying to convince me about the reptilian overlords that live underneath the Capitol building in D.C. I'm like, yeah, you lost them, you know. And so a lot of it is your reputation as well, how you present to other people. Mm -hmm. um, and there are times that we, you know, we can have conversations about the reptilian overlords, but it's not the intro. Hi, my name's T, and it's I think we've all- the reason we prep. Yeah, that's a great point. Right? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, my name's T, and I'm concerned about the Pleiadians coming here and ruling over us. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. You know what I'm concerned about? I'm concerned about raising my kids, spending time with my wife, you know, making sure that the horny goat next door doesn't get at my baby goat over here. You know what I mean? Like planting a garden in a month or two. Like I'm concerned about this upcoming mission. Those are my concerns. I'm not concerned about being enslaved. Um, so, you know, you get what you put out, man. It comes back to you. Uh, OPB is here. Shalom, brother. Any... Any tips on getting wife and kids on board with prepping? Why don't you hit that, honey? Holding up great, Badger. Michael Harris. Why so surus? I'm very surus. You just keep doing what you're doing. And when your wife asks why, do your best to explain in a non doomsy way. <laughs> <laughs> why you're stockpiling food, why you're buying guns and ammo. Because um, realistically, there's a lot of like everyday Shalom, reasons to prep other than shit hits the fan, it's chaos, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Like, there's a lot of other reasons. So mm -hmm. I mean, like natural disasters, job loss, loss of a job, you break an arm or a leg, you don't have a short-term disability. Mm. Um, new mouths to feed. New mouths to feed. Like, it just, it just goes on. So try approaching it from a realistic point of view. And because I know for me, like, that's what got me on board and keeps me on board. I'm like, you, I Nicole. realize I'll get there the, next. Uh, the SHTF scenario is out there. It's a possibility, but that's not why we prep on a daily basis. So, um, and for me, that was the big, like, once I got that, because we, we had situations where those realistic, um, more mm -hmm. realistic reasons came about, like, and the fact that we did prep eased a big part of that burden. So for me, that's what got me on board was seeing that, okay, yeah, you know, SHTF could happen, but these other things are a lot more realistic. Good answer. Thank you. Um, I was completely unapologetic about prepping. Still yeah, am. Yeah, you just did it. I never. Like, I'm gonna do it. I never asked permission. <laughs> I never was like, "Hey, babe, is it okay if?" I never asked permission. I never apologized for doing it. But I also made it clear that you will not go without because I am doing this. Right. All the bills will be paid. Your right. this is not going to uh, jeopardize the current um, quality of life that you experience. Um, if this takes any of my time, it'll be time taken away from my things, not our things. Um, and I, it was self-sacrifice on my end, but unapologetically. And I worked extra hours to afford the stuff that I bought for preps. Um, you know, spent extra time to train. And it was just whenever the question was, why the hell are you doing this? The answer was, because I love us, I love our family, and I don't want us to be acted upon by an outside force. And so I was just, I was me, logical, stone cold, unapologetic. Um, hey, I love you. This is why I'm doing it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to understand it, but I'm going to do it. And by living it, that allowed you to see that, hey, this.
This is not some crazy person ideology. This is my husband. Right. Um, and I understand why he's doing it. Mm -hmm. And I also took the opportunity to point out like, hey, isn't it good that we had food storage this week because our paychecks sucked? Or isn't it convenient when, you know, you thought you had to run to the store to get some cream of mushroom soup, but I actually had a case of it stashed away? Um, or, hey, did you hear about that person that got carjacked the next town over? Good thing we have weapons and train with them and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So I took the opportunity to evangelize when it made sense in context. And I was just unapologetic. Um, okay, getting to bug out bags for teens, what to do and what not to do. Uh, they do not carry weapons, um, at least not during rule of law. Uh, outside of, you know, and without rule of law, that's between you and your teen and what they're capable of. But they do not carry weapons, right. especially if that bag goes to and from a school. Anything that could be construed as a weapon cannot go, which is unfortunate. And so you're going to have your seas of survival. Cutting tool, no. Combustion, no. Cordage, sure. Container, yep. Cover, yep. Uh, compass, absolutely. They should have maps, hard copies of maps and a compass and know how to use them. You may go as far as plotting the routes out in between the school and the house or the house and the meetup spot or the whatever. Have that. You can even bind that. Have it all in a binder in a backpack ready to go. Camo, for sure. Camo plan, that could be as simple as they have their cell phone and they have a backup bow fang. Um, uh, rally points as part of your combo, part of your plan. Hey, if then, if I'm not here, then meet me here. If you can't get a hold of me on this number, then call me on this number. Get all that squared away. Um, casualty care, for sure. You can carry casualty care in and out of a classroom, no problem. Pressure bandages, tourniquets, chest seals, things like that. Um, unfortunately, a blowout kit. You should have a blowout kit. It makes sense. Um, yeah. Now, outside of the classroom, you may choose to, and from a legal standpoint, I in no way am making this statement as advice. I'm speaking completely hypothetically. If somebody was unable to take something across an imaginary boundary line, ergo, it would make sense to have that something that could be considered necessary on the other side of that imaginary boundary line, potentially in a cache. Um, things that are perhaps not per permitted on one side of the line could be located on the other side of the line. Um, but I would be looking at a teen's bob. I'd be looking more like a get home bag situation. How do they get from school back to the house? And then I would augment those, those, all those seas of survival with the stuff that they need to be able to carry if we're bugging out. If we're bugging out, man, at this point, it's my law, not the law, um, is where I'm at. And so if we're bugging out, it's, you know, hey, grab your backpack, Bob, we're going, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm going to have that thing loaded up. We have, you recently went on a road trip with our oldest, who's a teen, and they were loaded up. They were loaded up. Mm -hmm. uh, they had all the capabilities. And so that's kind of the push-pull dynamic there is in a rule of law situation, going to and from school, do not break the law. Uh, in a without rule of law situation, we're bugging out. Your pack should be no more than 30% of your body weight, preferably 20% of your body weight, and you want to have all the things. You know, cutting tool, combustion, cordage, container, cover, casualty care, camo, compass, combat, candle um yeah it's a bug out bag just size it appropriately for the person who's carrying it yeah. um that's the number one issue with bug out bags is weight the number two issue is people don't use them yeah. so keep it light and go use it you know i'm actually i'm putting together something for the patreon january giveaway right now part of it is 27 inches long and a lot of people Don't say... Don't exaggerate. Listen. <laughs> you know why women can't measure? I'm about to make half the, half of our viewers mad at us. You know why women can't tell distance? It's because all their life they've been told this is eight inches. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, uh, 
But anyway. <laughs> Cameron Shalom. Oh, boy. So anyway, it's, it's a camp axe. It's part of the Patreon January giveaway. And a lot of people are like, man, when I go to the woods, I'm taking an axe. Are you? You're going to take an axe with you, homeboy? Okay. In certain places, it makes sense. In other places, it doesn't. You don't need an axe in Texas. I'd tell you that for sure. So, better be not NFA item. <laughs> I can't give those away on Patreon. <laughs> Nicole, oh my God, spit my drink out. <laughs> and the winner is Fingernail. Uh, I think he's going to have to sit this one out. He won two in one year. So, well, I guess technically it's a new year. Can you believe that? Um, what does SHTF stand for? Shit hits the fan. Thank you, honey. One point on medical is people need to make sure they use their IFAC for them and their trauma bag or second kit for treating others. Agreed. Yep, your kit is for you. I can win. <laughs> yes, you can win. You are legal to win. Although, I don't, you might have a conflict of interest. You've been receiving all the receipts for the stuff that I've been buying for the patreon giveaway so you're gonna be like in february hey bear why don't you spend like three times as much in february as you did in january <laughs> wild edibles and medicinals um yeah you want to uh chime in on that i mean they are important they uh, uh when medicine runs out when people's antibiotics run out when their blood pressure medicine runs out, that's what you're gonna have. And if you don't know how to use it and use it properly, then the companion growing. Yep. Uh, you're gonna be shit up a creek. <laughs> like, just plain and simple. So, uh, I mean, I've talked about this. Like, I'm learning my medicinals. Um, Your medicinals. My medicinals. You should have another drink. I've been learning up my my medicinals. And stuff. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um, and herbals. Uh, I kind of shortcutted that first with oils uh, because oils to me were very like. Shalom, Hobie. Blank. Like, I can have this stash. I can know exactly how to use this stash. Um, and now that I've got that, I'm diving into. Because medicinals and herbals are very much so like your growing region. What's around you? What's available? Um, what can you find? There's a lot of lookalikes that you have to be careful of. Um, so I'm getting into that now. But uh, my kind of shortcut was essential oils. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Every, but you need to know it. Yeah, and I basically defer to you on that stuff. Yeah. You know, and that, that is one of those things where it's like there's – this is part of why we are such big proponents of tribe because there's so much to know. Like there's just – we have books on the subject, but having a book on the subject and knowing it are two completely different things, right? Yeah. Whereas like Sister Kate – walks around and she's like, oh, that's a Bedelicus Babalabadus, and it does right. this, this, and this, and you sh can use it like this and prepare a tincture of it with this. I'm like, you're awesome. Glad to know you. Because mm -hmm. I don't know that time. stuff. Yeah, it takes that's... a lot of time to get to that point. Yes, so. it does. Um, and you have to do it, mm -hmm. right? Like We have all of that information on the shelf, but we don't have that knowledge here. In the brain. Yet. Right. And so, and then that becomes an issue of prioritize, execute. There's only so many things one can do in the day. Right. And that's where it gets, you know, gets challenging. Yep. You know, we're working on livestock, we're planting the garden. You know, I shoot regularly now, which I needed to because I had a horrendous showing, Sukkot 2019, on the tribal championships. Um, so, oh. gotcha. you know, what else? I mean, maybe I should do it. <laughs> I could rock you with a pistol. Uh, <laughs> I could rock you with a pistol. <laughs> 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 
There's always someone that knows something. Mm -hmm. Practice on the guineas. I'm trying, brother. I'm trying. I've been watching this dude in South Africa that hunts things with air rifles murder guineas just to, so that I can live vicariously through him. It's the best. I was watching that last night. You know, I don't. I actually don't watch a lot of YouTube, but um, I've been watching. He's infatuated. I've been watching a lot of that guy. I'm like, watch, watch. He's gonna shoot this guinea right in the dome from 50 meters. Yeah. I'm like, yes, killed it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a big fan. Woo. Good night. Good night. Take an outline master herbalist, online master herbalist course. What does same mean? I don't know. I don't know, Jason. Advice for surviving a shooting. Wow. Bear practice. Copy. Advice for surviving a shooting. Um, you got shot? Let's, let's say you're in a shooting. Okay. So the, the best medicine under fire is gain firepower superiority. Get the bad guy to put his head down. I'm going to find Sam real quick. Find Sam real quick. Hey, you got anything left in Joe Bottle over there? Yeah. Hand it to me, please. Um, so the first thing we do to administer medicine in a shootout is establish firepower superiority. Um, ideally kill the effing effers that effed us up ideally but we at least need them to put their heads down so that we can get to the casualty and extricate the casualty from where they've been hit to a safe place where we can begin uh basically stop the bleed kind of stuff right combat lifesaver stuff so assess the patient you see and here's the thing you actually have to have medical on you um i actually catch quite a bit of flack from a lot of people for having one of these in my back pocket all the time but I have one of these at a minimum on me all the time because I have one of these on me all the time. And so I'm a firm believer, not in this particular holster because it sucks. There we go. I'm a firm believer in if you're going to have the capability to make holes, you need a capability to plug holes. But the next thing you do after that is triage the patient, assess the wounds. Um, you should call 911, assuming it's rule of law. You should get people spun up real quickly to your position. Um, and then stabilize the patient. So get off the X precisely. If you can make holes, have, damn it, t yeah, you're welcome. Um, so surviving a shooting, wow. A big part of that, because listen, crap happens, right? Bad stuff's going to happen. But um, employing situational awareness so that you're not where the shooting is going to happen in the first place is a great place to start. Um, reading, um, gosh, what is it called? Guerrilla Gunfighter by John Mosby, Clandestine Carry Pistol. He makes an excellent point repeatedly in that book that it doesn't matter how quickly you can draw from concealment if you're constantly employing situational awareness and you identify the problem early so that rather than having to draw real fast and get your gun out, you've got your gun out already and you're keeping it close to your body watching the situation. And then if things go south, you can employ it real quickly. I think that's a great move and one that's not discussed often. Um, you know, and it's, we have SOPs around here. Every vehicle we own has a comprehensive trauma kit in it. Uh, we have tourniquets on us all the time. We have weapons on us all the time. We have commo on us all the time. First aid. Yep. So surviving a shooting, um, it's kind of like, I pissed a lot of people off with my how to uh, survive martial law video because <laughs> my first comment was, don't be where the martial law is. And that made the internet mad, but it's true. Um, and that's the step, first step in a shooting is don't be where people are going to be shooting other people. After that, if you have a weapon, which you should, and people are still shooting, establish firepower superiority. Ideally, kill the bad guy, right? And then after there's no more lead flying, or if there's, say, three of us, 
if one of them can get the bad guy to duck and the other two can get to the person who's been hit, extricate that person, get them off the X and start conducting actual battlefield medicine, one of them could start assessing and plugging holes while the other one calls it in. And then from there, we can even, if the other guy's hit, establish a perimeter, check for other people who have been hit, so forth and so on. Right. But if it's just me, like let's say it's me and there's somebody shooting and I just happen to shoot that the other bad guy in the head cool who's been hit where are the other threats what's going on here so and all of this is one of the major reasons i don't freaking go in public i don't i just <laughs> don't, very rarely i don't go where the people are <laughs> people all the time are like bear are you gonna be at the xyz and i'm like not no but hell no no i won't be there i'll be on my homestead trying to keep the horny next door neighbor's goat from getting into my goats <laughs> like you know and it's not that i don't love y'all but man it's not worth taking chances and then there are some creepers on the internet as well um right. you blast it out there yeah no telling who's gonna show up yeah so it, it gets complicated <laughs> so if you had to bug out would you recommend 1022 or your carrier I have a video on the 1022 for preppers, and I just yesterday released a video on bugging out with body armor, question mark. So I would recommend watching both of those videos, but long and short is I'm not taking my 1022 for anything unless it's maybe squirrels or rabbits, as demonstrated on Patreon today. Definitely not for chickens. Um, I, just, I just don't like the... Um, I don't like the 1022 for anything that's like even remotely close to a combat situation. I have shot in right here a raccoon with a 22 and had it sneeze and spit a chicken's head out of its mouth and then run away. So, yeah. Um, the whole, well, you know. There's no replacement for shot placement. Yeah, you're right. There's also no replacement for 500 foot pounds of energy on a 45 caliber jacketed hollow point. Like, you know, it does matter. So. If you get the eye socket, uh, 200 feet per second, 9 millimeter, no replacement for a 50 cal, correct? Gunsmithing for long-term SHTF. Unless Hami gets first shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom, Cameron. You will never live it down. <laughs> it's fun. What prepper classroom videos do you have coming up? Uh, size matters. Thank you, Vicky. 27 inches. 27 inches. Um, I have mission planning and SHTF coming up. Basic, intermediate, and advanced uh, preparedness coming up. I have... I don't remember what else coming up. I don't remember which ones I recorded last week. Um, yes, balkanization will occur. Mine's bigger and five pounds. It's the motion of the ocean, bro. It's all about the stroke. It's all about the stroke. <laughs> Silver and gold bear or no? I'll answer that. Uh, Kenwood, Tim, but I've also had very good luck with Motorola's. Uh, the higher end Motorola's and the higher end Kenwood's are both good units. The ones that I have used are both good units. I own the Kenwood's, but I've had excellent uh, luck with the Motorola's. They're expensive. Just understand that now. They're expensive. But the Kenwood's that I bought over a decade ago still work great and it's not like they don't just live on a shelf they've been through the stuff uh and they still work great so no go to england in a dinghy a dinghy oh tia's in here where's tia at where you be at tia i don't see no tia <laughs> overall living's been drinking Oh, there's Tia. Shalom, Tia. I feel like it's hey, James, Tia. though, because she's, I don't think Tia would be talking about segmented hollow points on small game. <laughs> but you might. Shalom, hey, Tia. Shalom, James, Tia. <laughs> um, I forget what the other question was. 
Silver um, and gold. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. I firmly believe that one should own silver and gold from a wealth preservation standpoint with the caveat ad nauseum that I am not a financial professional. This is not advice. I don't play a professional on YouTube or anywhere else. Do not ever take anything I ever say ever, ever about anything as being advice. Okay? Okay. Copy. Um... <laughs> I believe people should own silver and gold as a wealth preservation tool, much more so than as a bartering tool. Because the vast majority of people that you will be bartering with did not have the forethought to put back silver and gold. They're going to be hungry. They're going to need shoes. They're going to be cold and wet. They're going to need clothes. They're definitely going to need food. They yeah. may need medicine. They may need security. They may need, need shelter. They're the things that they didn't prepare for. They're not going to need gold and silver. Yeah. Um, by and large, there may be some people who had the forethought to put back gold and silver. The reason money exists is to ease the flow of unlike things, goods and services of inequitable values. Uh, like for example, you have, I want to trade you goats for chickens, but I only want half a goat. Well, you can't give me half a goat. Well, if half a goat's 50 bucks and chickens are five bucks each, then I'll sell 10 chickens for 50 bucks and you sell me half a goat for 50 bucks. There, we've equalized. We have the equilibrium. That's how monetary systems work, or at least should work, without central banks and, and reptilian overlords and the Pleiadians and blah, blah, blah. Um, but most people aren't going to have gold and silver to trade with and barter with. So... To the extent that we invest in physical wealth, it's as a wealth preservation tool to weather the storms of our very finicky financial system. Mm -hmm. um, gold won't go to zero. It doesn't historically go to zero, nor does silver. And so it's an investment vehicle much more than it is a barter vehicle for me. If you're concerned about bartering, I'd have food, one pound packages of rice and beans, mm. medicine. I mean, antibiotics, literally, you could save somebody's life. Um, clothes, shoes, um, you know, shelter, th things like that that are actually useful. Um, and I also think it's a matter of how long do you think SHTF is going to last? If we go into grid down, uh, up to seven years. And in seven years, nobody's going to care about your gold Krugerrands. They're going to be hungry. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Always willing to be proven wrong. But I've discussed this with four separate financial advisors, all of which were into prepping, that combined those four people manage tens of billions of dollars in wealth. And they all more or less have come to the same conclusion that yeah, it's a nice idea to think that we're going to trade with tenth of an ounce silver pieces, but people are going to be hungry. So you use it as a wealth preservation tool instead. So that's where I'm at with it, and that's how we, that's how we recommend our clients uh, approach it as well. But generally speaking, that handoff, uh, they get handed off to our financial people because I'm not a financial people, and I don't play one on YouTube either. So that's my answer on silver and gold. <clears throat> what tourniquets do you use and where can I get some? This is a Gen 7 cat tourniquet. Um, and I get these from adventurefrontier.com, combat application tourniquet. And these come from adventurefrontier.com. I also have several of the Gen 3 recon medical and they're they're both excellent you can get the rec you can get anything you want on amazon you can get those gen 7 cats on adventurefrontier.com and all of the medical kits that we sell come with gen 7 cat tourniquets from adventurefrontier.com support small business thank you instead of corporation yeah yeah. Even though we're trying to get bare facts on Amazon, but it doesn't matter. Go to adventure. Even when, <laughs> even when we have bare facts on Amazon, I will still tell y'all to go to adventurefrontier.com because he's our brother and we love him. Yeah. So, 
yeah, go to adventurefrontier.com. Um, do you like the NRA? I'm completely dispassionate in either direction about a bunch of bureaucrats. How's that for an answer? Um, Bear, Bear Facts okay for schools. Not only are they okay for schools, we sell them to schools by the dozens. So, yes. The only issue that you may have as far as bringing it into the school is that there is a 14-gauge decompression needle in a bear fac, and uh, it's a sharp. There's also a pair of scissors in there, shears, and they're sharp. And so you may want to consider potentially removing those things from the kit. The shears are to cut away clothing so that you can identify and pack wounds, apply tourniquets, have access to the patient, you know, whoever's been critically wounded, that you can open them up and get at the issue. The decompression needle is not necessarily some, but something that somebody who's not been trained needs to have in a school. But um, what we have done where we sell kits to schools is that people who have been trained in the use of a decompression needle get kits in their classrooms that have decompression needles in them. People that have not been trained in the use of decompression needles simply don't get a kit that has a decompression needle in it. Most um, puncture wounds to the chest, we're going to apply a chest seal anyway, and then if we need to aspirate that pleural space uh, with a decompression needle, that's going to be something that happens after the chest wound is applied. And just simply applying the chest wound is going to buy us a lot more time than if we didn't do that anyway. And so uh, decompressing the patient comes after the application of the chest uh, seal anyway. And so it's okay. Perhaps it could be argued that it's less than ideal that those kits in those classrooms don't have a decompression needle, but they do have chest seals. And so I'm much more comfortable with people who don't know how to use decompression needles not having them because there is a heart in this chest. Yeah, it's and, dangerous. <laughs> and you don't want to poke a hole in the heart in this chest. So, and of course, there's an algorithm about where that thing goes. But just like you with your self-defense weapon, you don't want the first time you actually use it to be when you need it. It's the same thing with a decompression needle. You need to have training in it before you employ it in a situation where it's needed. So... Anywho, yes, Amen. Uh, they are good to go for classrooms. We sell them by the dozens to classrooms. Um, and anybody who wants to buy a dozen or more, please hit me up and I'll give you a special pricing on them because um, I want the kits to be available uh, in classrooms, in schools, in churches, in businesses and organizations where they will get used. And I will go as deep as I can in discounts with them to get good kits in the hands of good people to save lives. That's why the kits exist is to save lives. So Julius, bless you. Thank you. I wish Stop the Bleed actually taught chest seals. Yep. Well, see, that's another thing. Two more things that actually come in the bear fac is nasal pharyngeal airway as well as a mylar blanket. Um, and then in the... Um, Bare fact, you have a nasal pharyngeal airway, no mylar. Although I guess we could probably add one for very little cost. What about weapons? Going to need a little bit more than that, Julie. Any suggestions as far as how to get this training with the decompression needles without a lot of money? Um, depends on where you are. You can certainly take a TCCC class, Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Um, go to your nearest... Um, EMS, ambulance corps, um, emergency management shop, depending on where you are, walk in and say, hey, I'm looking to find a place that can teach me how to decompress a plural space. And if they look at you with blank stares, those aren't your people. <laughs> if they go, oh, okay, do you have a decompression needle? And you go, maybe I do, maybe I don't. And they say, okay, so what you're looking for, here's the algorithm. You want to go in between the second and fourth intercostal space, and here's how you count the ribs, and yada, 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 and hold on, let me get my dummy, and I'll show you how this works. Then you're in the right place. Um, and they can probably refer you to somebody else as well. James Cipriano, shalom, brother. Jeff Root, bless you, brother. Thank you. Jeremy, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Y'all be crazy. Following Yeshua, bless you. Working in the ER in the medical field, it's amazing how many people come in because they improperly try to apply a medical device and caused much more harm than good. 
Amen, brother, yeah. and thank you for making that point. There's a reason there are trained professionals. <laughs> <laughs> because you watch a YouTube video does not make you a trained professional. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and that that's like, listen, I like like USMC Doc 14. I like that guy. I used to think Skinny Medic was okay until he got what others have referred to as paragod syndrome, is when you're a paramedic and you think that you're actually God. So uh, I'm not a big fan of him anymore. And like every video he has is like, this is the new tourniquet. It's available in our store, medicalgearoutfitters.com. It's pretty good. And go to medicalgearoutfitters.com. Okay, thanks for watching Skinny Medic. It's like all his videos now. I get it, you got a business to run. Maybe every other video, every third video, but every single freaking video, copy yeah. that. Um, the Patriot Nurse used to do good videos, and now she's all like, blah, blah, blah. I'm mad about something. And I Yeah, I can't watch her. I used to I used to enjoy her videos, and now they've just gotten she's gotten away from the nursing stuff. And I'm like, Okay, I'm out. I, I don't get angry about politics. Y'all know me. I don't get angry about politics. So people that do get angry about politics, and bless them, it's their right to be angry about it. It's just not my shtick. I'm just not interested. So if I'm not going to be angry about politics, I ain't going to watch somebody else be angry about politics. Right. I got something better to do than that. So I hang out on my porch and drink wine with my sweetie, you know. And I redecorate my laundry room. You redecorate the laundry room. It's a powder room now? No, that's just the bathroom. Oh, just the potty's the powder room? Yeah. So. It's where you put your powder on your mm. tush. My butt? Yeah. We got butt powder in there? I could, I could make Get me on. some dedicated butt powder. I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> Renee loves your... Um, <laughs> Lady of Lake Fork, it, it's just you and me with the butt powder. It's just you and me. And Renee loves your pipe shelves. Thank you. I love them, too. Uh, do you reload your own ammo? Nope. Mrs. Hunter Seeker says it looks good. Puka, you're welcome. You're welcome, question mark. Uh, do you reload your own ammo? No. Um, I don't reload my own ammo for two main reasons. One, I'm really busy. And I'm really intentional with my time because I'm really busy. Uh, I don't have a lot of downtime. Two, I have friends that reload. So I'm just like, yo, make me 5.56. Five, five, and they're like, yo, okay. The end. So, um, yeah. What? What you be giggling They're talking at? about booty powder. <laughs> booty powder? <laughs> Telling you, bearsbootypowder.com. Like, we'll, we will make this happen. Mm -hmm. Does Bear in the woods? You know he does with bearsbootypowder.com. It's going to say, you'll have to kill me a mole, so I have a little mole puff. <laughs> you can't touch that thing. It's got paws. It's an abomination. Yeah. You'd be ritually unclean until sundown handling its carcass every day. Right? Would I have a mole puff might be <laughs> worth it. <laughs> It ain't worth it. <laughs> You've never had a mole I'll puff. I'll get you. I don't want a mole puff. You might. Now we got a new cereal idea, too. Mole puffs. High in protein. <laughs> it's like one per spoon. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Um, yes, I have my slaves do my ammo bidding. That's exactly right. After sundown, it's on. <laughs> We'd have to have multiple puffs, though, with everybody's name tag on them, because you don't want to share your puff. That's true. It's not a butt puff, no. Thoughts on revolvers for backup EDC, and do you <laughs> own one? Um, so, I like 357. I think it's a great round. Man, that's a lot of horsepower in a cartridge. That's what we had, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Um, we don't have it we anymore. We don't currently have it anymore, because it was a snubby. And it was, like, adopted from a friend who needed some money for a thing. And I was like, okay, yeah. Um, so I have three fifty seven ammo. I don't have a three fifty seven revolver. And it was supposed to be my gun. Uh-huh. Which I did not like. Yeah, you didn't like it. Mm -hmm. But it was better than nothing. Better than a sharp stick in the eye. And um, I do like the XDs. I, I do like revolvers. But as a backup EDC... I mean, let me just let me just get here with this. Hold on. 
Okay, here's 17 rounds. Here's 34 rounds. Here's 51 rounds. So, um, now I'm good for backup EDC. And even if, okay, if I'm carrying the Taurus G2, I always carry two spare mags. It's just what I do. Do I need two spare mags? Probably not, but I like having two spare mags. So with the Taurus G2, I got 37 rounds. With the Glock 21, I've got 39 rounds. With the Glock 17, I've got 51 rounds. I don't need a backup. Um, I don't need a backup. And I can clear a malfunction on my primer, on my handgun. I can clear a malfunction faster than I can draw my secondary. Now, what if I get disarmed? Okay. Maybe you could maybe make a case for I've been disarmed. I'm going for my wheel gun. But if I've been disarmed and we're close enough that we can touch each other, I have this and I'm going to stick it in all your soft parts as quickly and effectively as I can. And then I'm going to beat your nose through the back of your head and I'm going to stomp on your throat with my size 13 triple E's and then uh, pick my gun back up. Maybe call the cops um, or die one or the other. And uh, I have no intentions of going out like that. So probably stomp your throat. So a backup gun for EDC as a revolver. Revolvers are heavy. They're bulky. They're rounds limited. If it was a home defense weapon, 357, sure. 41 Magnum, sure. 44 Magnum, sure. Um, even 38 Special with the right load, sure, absolutely. But as a backup EDC, no. No, man, not for me. Uh, it might work for you, but not for me. I don't, I got 51 rounds of 135 grain plus P ballistic tips on me. I, I'm uh, back up to what? To that? I can fight my way from me, from here to my truck and fire two rounds per step and have an AR in my hands. So. Throw the tactical bear, but not around. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we mark smoke. No, that's butt powder. That's not smoke. That's butt powder. Um, 369 Aloha. I don't know what that means, but uh, 456 Aloha back at you. 454 Kasul. Yeah, you have fun with that, man. I like my wrists. Um, tactical bear activate. Um... The only reason to have a revolver is that when I have to start loading my own ammo and black powder instead of smokeless, yeah, I can get down with that. How do you make a new team more cohesive? Go do hard things, Sam. Together. Together. Bless you, yep. Yankee. Go do hard things together. Yes. And hard things that matter. Don't do trust falls and right. stupid, like, stupid crap like that. Go do hard things together. Put Stressful your Stressful situations yep. equals unit cohesion. Bonding. Yep. And figuring out like if you're yeah. a match or not. Mm -hmm. Or if they're good at something or not. Yeah, it's like, man, I thought Bob was cool, but actually Bob's kind of an a-hole. Yeah. Or, you know, Sally's a real sleeper. I you know, I was I thought Sally was just this little mouse of a woman, but it turns out she's got fire in her belly. She right. can get after it. It's like, ah, you, when you put people in stressful situations, you get to see the real them come right. out. Or she's a ruthless bitch. Like, right. Mm -hmm. Ah, trust falls. <laughs> Lady of Lake Fork. We're going to do trust falls. We're going to powder our bums first, and we're going to do trust falls. And then when we catch everybody, there's just going to be a cloud that goes up. A rainbow cloud. Rainbow cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hobie spitting fire again. Fruity pebbles. <laughs> 15 rounds of 9 millimeter or 10 rounds of 45. I'll tell you what, if you can't problem solve with either of those, um, it's range time. What's Hobie saying? Sorry, Bob, you're not an a hole. Okay. Hobie, I love you, brother, but I cannot find your comment. I, you ain't catching my big A. <laughs> oh, man. Tactical butt powder. 
Uh, I'm loving my judge with bandolier holster. Good for you, Grandma Ginger. Um, <laughs> an IV in the forehead. That sounds comfy. And we're going to have to make tactical butt powder. Tactical, just what we need. Give it another, away for Patreon. Another, another project. Well, yeah, you could make some. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'll make some tactical butt powder. Where are you going? Over here. Okay. I'm going to go right here. Okay. So I can read. Sold a new sticker. Uh, the value of force on force training is extremely high. Um, yes, it's old school camo. I have several, but my main one is my 30 carbine. One gallon or five gallon mylar bags for food. For me, everything I do is five gallon. Um, I can see the value in one gallons. What I don't like is it putting one gallons into a five gallon bucket. You don't get five gallons worth of them in there. You get about four. So you're wasting space in buckets. Um, my whole thing is for what I'm putting in buckets and the number of people that I am feeding out of those buckets. When I slit that mylar, that bucket ain't going to be open that long. Now, right now, it seems like, man, it's going to take a long time to eat 32 pounds of whatever you start feeding 8 10 12 20 people out of that 30 pound bucket two pounds per person per day you feed 10 people out of that bucket it's gone in a day i ain't worried about it being in a one pound sack and that's this is why i harp on food with you guys all the time it's probably every other video i'm talking about food food storage telling you guys to stack it to the rafters shalom tony john bless you brother um I'm telling you, um, I'm telling you, stack food, man. Because if you've got, if you got 10 people, two pounds per person per day, 30 pounds in a bucket, that's a day and a half out of that bucket. How many buckets you got? If you got, you know, 20 buckets of food, cool. There's 10 people eating. That's a month's worth of food. That means you need 240 buckets to feed 10 people for a year. You got 240 buckets worth? It's a lot. Yes, I'm talking about it's dry weight because caloric density is based upon dry weight. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people wanting butt powder, honey. So your, your spreadsheet scares me with 11 people. Oh, sister, we got you covered. We will hook it up. Um, sailing solo, bless you. Hey bear, what are you drinking on? Robert, I was drinking Texas Ranger whiskey and then this is Apothic Crush red wine. Um, when I was in the student riots in Montreal, I told the journalist, if you send me running, you better be running in the same direction as me. Good to know, Mitch. Three tips for better team communication. Hmm. Hmm. Don't hold it in. Yeah, you have to actually communicate. That's yeah. a good place to start. Brevity. Um, communicate what needs to be said, but don't, don't under-communicate and don't under-communicate. Um, a snowflake. and don't be a snowflake. That's a great point. Yeah. Like if somebody critiques you, don't automatically get defensive. And... Shalom, Mad Kelt. Vicky, it is. I can't wait till y'all are here. We can hoist a tanker to veil with Vicky Fulkerson. Their beer was good. Yeah, your beer was good, says Harmony. When did you first hear about Pastor Joe Fox? Um, great question. Four years ago? Perhaps four years ago? And I know this because, mm, yeah, maybe three years ago. Because I was vaguely familiar with PJ from some of his survival videos, Viking preparedness videos, prepper stuff. Um, and then after our church imploded in North Texas, I was so pissed at the most high. I was pissed, uh, because 
her family of 200 was gone and we didn't have a church and it was becoming very clear to me that I had been spoon fed lies either knowingly or unknowingly and had been calling that a relationship with my creator and I was just pissed and I would spend my days screaming at the sky and just asking Yah to speak to me and then one night in the midst of all of that I was doing dishes and I would put my iPhone propped up on top of the coffee machine next to the sink so that I could listen to and occasionally watch a YouTube video while I did dishes. And this video came on called Withdraw and Prepare from Shofar Mountain. And I saw the thumbnail as it was loading. And I said, I recognize that guy. I think that's that prepper guy. And um, I listened to that video. And it still gets me right now thinking about it. Because our creator used Pastor Joe Fox of Viking Preparedness to get me and get my attention and bring me back around to Father Yah because I was pissed. And I, I had not given up on Yah, but I had given up on his people. And um, hearing that sermon, I, li I remember I threw the dish that I was washing into the sink and looked up at Yah through my ceiling and I said, is this what you needed me to hear? And I got a resounding yes. And so that coupled with, I had already been militantly reading my Bible because um, I realized I could not trust what men had to say about our creator. I was no longer going to outsource my eternal relationship with my creator to the lowest bidder. And so I was diligently reading the word, praying for guidance, and I stumbled upon Shofar Mountain. And I tested everything that Pastor Joe had to say against the word. And it was really powerful for me because I had had the conviction to keep Torah. And I thought I was the only person in the world. I thought I was crazy. I was like, yeah, why would you just give me this revelation? There's why this makes, it makes sense to me when I read your word that I'm supposed to be doing these things, but where's everybody else? I thought I was alone. And then I found out, oh no, there's not hundreds, not thousands, not tens of thousands, but millions of people awakening to the father's word. And um, so I started sending Pastor Joe emails. And I'd say, hey, man, yeah, I get it. We're supposed to do this thing because of Leviticus 11, but what, what about Mark 15? And then he would reply back one line, Matt 7, 14. Copy that. And I'd go look, and I'd read some more, and I'd say, yeah, but what about 1 Kings 11 through 15? And he'd reply back, Deuteronomy 28. That's it. One, and I'm like, son of a B. Right? And it was, <laughs> it was probably at least six months, it might have been a year of that, just diligently, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to walk this walk, but what about this? Why do we do this? Numbers 15, verse 37. Okay. And then I'd get Numbers 15, verse 37, the rebellion of Korah, we wear Zitziot because it's the embodiment, physical embodiment of the Father's commands and our covenant with him. I'm like, oh, I'm getting, awesome, I'm getting an explanation now. Cool. And that eventually, eventually turned into a full paragraph. And I was honored. <laughs> Over the course of like two years, eh, 18 months. Yeah. And I remember Pastor Joe said on a Patreon video, he said, I don't want anything on this front porch but two rocking chairs and a table between them. Well, I worked at a wood shop, was managing a wood shop. We made world-famous sleigh rocker rocking chairs. In fact, there's one of them right there. Look at that rocking chair. Yeah, yeah, these bare hands. Check that out. Oh, and battle dogs also. Look at that rocking chair, though, right? There are four of those, four remaining in existence right now. There are four of those chairs remaining in existence. One is in Glenn Beck's personal office. Two are on Pastor Joe and Sister Kate's front porch. And one is right there 
Those are the last four ever uh, after our shop fire ever. There will never be any more of them. But I said, hey, we can make rocking chairs. We can make a table. And so I sent him an email and I said, hey, I want to bring you rocking chairs and a table. And uh, we have questions about Torah. We'd like to keep Shabbat with y'all. And so we did. Um, you got the prints off the chairs. Copy that. Thanks, Keith. Um, no, you missed the whole point where he shouted you out. We're getting there. Well, that was before the rocking chairs. I don't think it was. Yeah, it was. Was it? Yeah. Okay. And he was like a little schoolgirl in the kitchen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> you were pretty much. It was hysterical. And he said my name. Oh, my gosh. He said my name. I can't believe it. That was a big deal. Yeah. I know. Did so mom, it's okay, Sam. Did mom freak you out? Yeah. It's all right. Uh -huh. I'm not. Battle dog. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's okay. so badger, amen, right? So, um, so yeah. And then we got invited up to Shofar. We spent the day with Pastor Joe and Sister Kate, and I was amazed at how awesome they are, how real they are, um, how much, how much deeper their authenticity is in person um, versus just not that they're not authentic on camera because they are, but it's the difference between, you know, watching somebody on camera and seeing them in person. Um, and we were just blown away and, you know, here we are. So it's a blessing. It's an absolute blessing to, to call them brother, to call them sister, to get to do life with them um, and to have their, their knowledge and their encouragement. You know, and this is something that is never discussed and I think probably should be much more often. We need to do a better job of lifting up, up people who pour into us. They have done, they have poured a lot into a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They continue to pour a lot into a lot of people. Like pastor, like spiritual leadership should pour into a lot of people. And it's, frankly, it's exhausting at times. And it can be very emotionally exhausting if the people that you're pouring into, for better or worse, go somewhere else. Right. Um, or, you know, it's just, it's a lot of hard work to shepherd a flock. And, um, well, it's just like being a manager. It's like, know, it's like it's like being a manager, but it's deeper than that. You yes, know? but I mean, you you spend a ton of time training and yeah, uh, leading your employees, and then oh, they're getting paid twenty five cents more at <laughs> I'm out Home Depot. See you later. <laughs> right, and yeah, it's very very disheartening mm -hmm. at times, and so yeah, if if you have good people in your life, praise them. Yeah. Let them know that they're valuable to you and yeah. appreciated because they, they, meaning the good people in your life, don't have to do that. Mm -mm. They don't, none of us are that special. They don't have to take the time out of their life to pour into you or anybody else. And so I'm thankful. Honestly, I'm very thankful for Pastor Joe and Sister Kate and for the Shofarians that they have poured into us what they have poured into us. Yeah. Um, we are better for knowing them on a lot of levels, including spiritual. So, yeah. And that's why, you know, people like to inquire as to the tribe uh, mentality and the tribe dichotomy in our lives. And it's because these people mean a lot to us. We spend a lot of time with them. We go intentionally go out of our way to spend time with them. And um, it's amazing when you're intentional with your time and your resources, you know, you will reap as you sow. If you sow well, man, you reap wonderfully. So, cool, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> um, we missed all of the comments. James Cipriano, bless you, brother. Thank you. 
No. I don't want to remove or report you. I have fat fingers. Um, bless you, the hill people. Ashton, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> the music well. Yep. Tactical Powder Tuesday is coming soon. Oh, you're spending two weekends in February. Awesome. Michael, shalom. Barry, what's your thoughts on having books for reference? Uh, absolutely. Yes. We All have the books. lots of books. And I'm a big fan of them. Um, I'd really like to get an encyclopedia. We should do that. Mm -hmm. There's a 1930s set for sale that I've seen that I've kept my eyes on. A 1930s set? But it's 1930s. Do they... <laughs> There's a lot that's happened in the last 90 years. Um, arguably the the greatest increase in technology and information ever in the last 90 years. So, I mean, what does an Encyclopedia Britannica run? There are a lot. My mom bought one when I was little. And... Enlightened and prepping. Is it okay to say shalom if you're not Torah compliant? You can say whatever you want to, brothers right. or sisters. It's, it's like people saying it's, Happy Hanukkah, and you're not. It's Jewish peace. And... Shalom means peace. You are yeah. giving your peace to that person. So, that's yeah. It, it's kind of like aloha, right? It's you know, it's it's hello, it's goodbye, it's my peace to you. Nice to see you. Hey, what's up? It's it's shalom. I'll tell you. If you're worried about whether or not you can say shalom if you're Torah compliant, then the Spirit's knocking on your heart, and you should heed, heed that Spirit. You should heed that little check that's been put, on, put in your spirit. Pray over that and ask the Father to speak to you about it. Shalomi. Hallelujah. Charles, shalom. Then shalom, my brother. Cop. Happy today, brother. I thought it said happy birthday or B day. <laughs> Have you ever met Richard over at the Nut and Fancy channel? Nope. I'm a big fan of uh, Nut and Fancy. I like what he's about. And I like that he's unapologetic about what he's about. Um, and I also like that the gear that I have bought that he has reviewed, I've always found his reviews to be accurate. Um, I bought the Ontario Knife Company Artac 2 based upon his review and freaking love it. This watch was a watch that he reviewed and I love it. Um, so I, I trust the information that he puts out that it's not third party advertising. I like his commitment to the authenticity of his channel. I really like the way he interfaces with his children and his wife. I, I really like that. I like that he's unapologetically a man of faith. Um, he's himself. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I'm not a fanboy, but I am a big fan. I'd love to hang out with him. Here comes Mommy. a toddler. Mommy, the tank is empty, and I only talked a little bit. And I can't drink without a little bit. And I want to make a magic. Mom. Is that boss? Yeah. Dad, I don't want to look to the people. Uh, you don't want to look to the people? Okay. <laughs> right, go tell Nine and Bub to fill up the tank. Yeah, they know how. Dad, what? there's a moth right there. There's a moth right there? Yes. You should eat it. No. Come on, just a little bit. No. Okay, don't eat it. Go get the tank filled up. Hey, go tell Shiny to fill the tank up. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> micro bear. <laughs> Wheeze. Yeah. There's nothing micro about that bear. No, so we were at the library today. My oldest daughter reads books like... It's her job. It's her job, like... 300 pages done <laughs> in a day yeah no problem yep so uh 
So instead of buying her books, I've implemented library where all the free books are. Um, so we went today to get her some new books and Aspen put her new little book up on the counter and the lady was talking to her and she was like, oh, how old are you? And Aspen goes, three. And the lady was sitting there with like five fingers and I'm like, no, <laughs> no. She looks five or six, but no, she's three. <laughs> she's three. And the lady's eyes got about this big. Yeah. Um, that kid power lifts feed sacks. Yeah. Yeah. For real. She she just picks up a 40 pound sack of feed and is like, one day. where do you want this? Yeah. The crazy thing is that somewhere Yah's preparing a husband for that little girl. That poor kid. Potentially right across the creek. <laughs> that poor She's kid. She's going to beat him. <laughs> We're going to have to train it out of her. Train it out of her. Mike, glad to hear it, man. Yeah, we, we enjoyed that series. <laughs> Badger copy. Uh, Michael, enough. A very good ratio. Uh, I'll put it that way. NWA, we love you back, brother. Have a good evening, man. We'll talk soon. Hello, Rex. Hello. Good to see you. Why are you taking my head? Leave my head alone, Scarecrow. You're banned for life, remember? <laughs> Half-breed, that's great. Raising little girls is a 20-year investment in another man's future. Mm. Wow. Yep. Can you make a video about special needs children and preparedness? I can. I've made two already for Patreon, but I will make one for YouTube. I got all the fingers. Fingers. 27 inches. Peace, love, chicken grease. What time is it? I don't know. I don't have my phone. How Push at nine. Holy Anatolian. cow. You go to Anatolia and you look for puppies. And when you find them, see the issue no. in Anatolia is that you can only earn your manhood if you successfully rob a puppy from the lead tribe. The no. problem with the lead tribe is that the lead tribe are all descendants of the Anunnaki, which are the people with the giant heads that were formerly Horus and Isis way back in the day. And so you have to run in there. The thing is that they can see movement real well, but they don't. Okay, so. <laughs> Reptilian overlords. Give me that wine bottle. Okay. First off, like, I don't know, I probably am going to totally flip and butcher this, but, so, Anatolians are a breed, but they're not, like, really a breed. They're kind of like a mutt, like a Turkish mutt. They're a cross. Right. Um, a true... A man over a living. Turkish, like, guard dog is a kangaroo. And Kangles are awesome dogs. And I want to Kangle my next dog. Bless you, PJ. And go to find Barry, Ferrari, Ferrari. You need kennels. to learn how to spell this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like F E R R I E, I think. Don't look at me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not on Facebook. Um,. But I think they actually have a website too. But go to a fairy, it's pronounced fairy, but go to their website. Find them on Facebook. I think they're on Instagram. Like they're on all the things. Find them. They have a specific like breeders list that uh, they do the interviewing. There's a buyback. There's like they start with training already. Uh, all the things. 
and find you a good, good breeder. One dog at a time, not two, not three, one. And train that dog when you can no longer correct that dog, or the, you don't remember the last time you corrected that dog, then you can get a second one, but one dog at a time. And that's it. Mm. And then all the tribes people from Anatolia will come to your house and bless the dog. Yes. And then it's actually yours. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is difficult because they are descended from the Anunnaki and they're very tall. <laughs> very, very tall. <laughs> Genesis 6 4, also known as the Nephilim or the. Um... What? What's going on here? Have you tried the bread knife? No, we haven't yet, no, brother. Not yet. Thank you, though. Um, you gotta make some bread. Yeah, you do. The whole the whole internet is salivating over your bread recipe. Um, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Twenty seven inches. It's an axe, people. It's an axe. Um, we have a Dutch Shepherd trained to do all the things. That's awesome, Nick and Mikey. <laughs> they live. Yep. I like Wrangle Star, but he's been like an infomercial lately. Yeah, man. Oh, I every time I watch that guy, it's like, eh. Third party advertising. Prepper Dad, that's awesome, man. Thank you. Is there anything Hami can't make? Where's She says her bed. And do you want to make up? It's not over. Okay. I just said. There. Yeah, okay. all finished. Okay. How do I look, y'all? You look fabulous. You look really mm. good. You did it. Good job. Good job, Weez. I'm not next. Um, <laughs> how much is good body armor? Um, go to adventurefrontier.com. They have Spartan armor. Spartan is good. I just ordered a new set of plates for a system I'm putting together, and I, I got them from adventurefrontier.com. I could have gone anywhere. I could have got anything. I got Spartan armor from adventurefrontier.com. Yes. We are in this weird stage of channel growth as well where – Pretty much anything we want, we can ask for, and it'll show up at our door, which is weird because I don't want much. And don't but then lots of people contact us and they're like, please to make for us, you give a good review of knife that is tactical for bushcraft. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Then we are to make good deal for you to have knife at door six months and you pay for nothing but review for good knife bushcrafting. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, listen, you guys aren't getting it. And like, my name is Jim and we like very much the videos that you are to make for knife that you bushcraft with on tubes of you. And I'm like, no, no, listen, you guys don't get it. <laughs> all right, and it's, it's like emails like that all day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> It's, it's incessant. It's nonstop. And so, like, if I wanted, really, if I wanted AR-500 plates, I could call AR-500 and say, yo, send me some plates. I'll talk about them. And they will. I don't want to abuse that. Um, I definitely don't want to abuse that. And his name is Tony, exactly. <laughs> we get one guy who calls us like, hello, my name is Jim. I'm like, your name's not Jim. Yes, my name is Jim. Like, yeah, I got it. Okay, copy that. Thanks, Jim. Have a good one. Uh, yeah, copy that concrete. So we, we don't want to, we do not want to abuse that, but we are solicited daily. Like, I, I just got, just got an email from a, drum roll please, flashlight company. I'm like, I'm good. Thanks. I don't, we don't need to talk about flashlights. I have all the flashlights I want. Um, well, and I'd have more, but my wife likes to steal them. So, uh, Team DB Inc., thank you. Um, so, oh, yeah. 
That is a serious flashlight. You need to not lose that one. I'm not. That one, like, literally, you can light up the moon with it. He gets mad it. at me because I use all the flashlights for chicken candling. Yeah, that's what she uses them for. We got a $150 BA tactical flashlight. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, oh, I think I can see a baby in there. I'm like, that's not what it's for. Um, no, it's dark. We will find more Steven. Um, so, anyway, I could get plates from anybody, and I most recently bought, bought, not right requested or was gifted, bought Spartan Armor from AdventureFrontier.com. So uh, I dig them. And I have referred clients recently to AdventureFrontier.com for Spartan Armor. So, you know, really the steel is all the same. Uh, we have clients in the steel industry. I've asked this question. The steel, AR500 steel is AR500 steel. AR-550 or AR-650, it's, all the steel is the same. The specifications are the same. The only thing that's different is the um, spalling coats and the carriers and the trauma pads. So the steel's the same. It doesn't matter. So that being said, I've had good experience with Spartan Armor. Um, have bought some and buying more. We'll probably buy more in the future. So <sighs> there you go. Or have the government give you some. My name is Stephen from accounting. We give you keyboard, good quality, you show now. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Moonlight. But but you really, flashlights, pens, and lighters are communal items. Only because we love y'all, but otherwise, no. <laughs> um, Moonlight, you were not nearly as, um, you were not nearly as persistent as they normally are. Like, it has to be constant like okay. please to for send to you bushcraft axe for make tp with buffalo skin that we also send from russia because we have all the connect with buffalo you are to please want to make a good video and you make all the views so we have good money for today okay I'm like th that's not even english yes my name is jim and i want to craft the bush knife with you for acts that you take for survival in case the zombies make buffalo skin all right jim this this doesn't even make sense anymore I'm like yes it makes good sense for buffalo is to zombie to survive for a bushcraft axe so you make video okay sure you absolutely so and you know frankly early on Early on, there were a couple of, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll try this out. You send it to me. I'll try it out. And I got it. And one example was a, a flashlight that came with a rail mount and a pressure switch for an AR. And it was so bad that I emailed them and it said, not only am I not doing a video on this, you need take it back. And they were like, yeah, we don't want you to, to pay the money for you to send it back. You just keep it. And I threw it in the trash. I threw it in the trash. Yeah, it's about time. That's how bad it was. Um, and then there were, uh, there have been several other things. A couple of knives. I almost reviewed one. Um, it was a good knife. But it was a complete and utter Gerber knockoff. Um, it was a complete Gerber knockoff. Perfectly executed Gerber fake. The only, it even said made in the United States, stamped Oregon, the whole nine. The only thing that made it clear that it wasn't actually a Gerber knife from Oregon was that I had the customs paperwork showing that it came from the Xinhao province of China. I was like, I'm not doing this. Coyotes. Oh, it's on. So, yeah, I showed it, but I didn't review it. Remember that, Chris Taylor? Yeah. And I called Gerber, and I was like, yo, there's people who are totally ripping off your product. They're like, yeah, thanks. Okay, have a good life. So, whatever. Do I think Virginia is going to turn ugly? Michael, copy. Thank you. Um, live stream yacht hunt. Good dog. I like how he's checking out the toddler first to make sure she's safe. Good puppy. He's body blocking the toddler from the coyotes. 
You're gonna stress that dog out. <laughs> hey, Aspen, stop. Hey. He's doing his job. Come on, baby. Good job, Sam. Good dog, yep. Good job. Okay. Good job, Sam. Good job. Tell him good job, honey. So, yeah, we need a night outing. We need to just freaking hang out again. So what do I think is going to happen in Virginia? Yeah, I'm keeping a very close eye on Virginia. I think what's likely to happen, I'd say, I'd say, man, I don't want to sign probabilities. But I'd say the greatest chance is that... The Virginia Democrats overplayed their hand. They see the overwhelming show of force, and they're like, um, we're not going to do this right now, and it becomes a non-issue. I think the next likely thing to happen is that Virginia doubles down, and they go, yeah, we're going to do this thing. The bill goes to a vote, and it gets voted down. I think the next most likely thing to happen after that is they say, yeah, we're going to do this thing. They double down. The bill goes to vote, and it passes, but then it never gets enforced, and then that becomes fodder for the discussion about states' rights versus federal rights, the supremacy clause, um, and then hopefully we get a Supreme Court decision on um, states' ability to infringe upon a constitutionally protected God-given right. That's kind of how I see it going with the huge caveat that the moment shots are fired, everything changes. And the moment that those bills become laws, everything changes. So. I'm giving serious thought to go and you know of anyone else of like mind um, in the area? No, I don't know. Um, I know a lot of people are going. I know I've had a lot of people ask me to go, and the short answer is no. It's the middle of January, and our earliest availability for anything is mid-May. Because, you know, we are kind of busy. So. It's 9 o'clock. It's bedtime, y'all. You gonna say bye? No, say a nice bye. Say bye. I don't want to say bye. You don't want to say bye? Okay. That's how you get rid of a toddler. That was pretty good. I like that. Hey, come here. The dog listens better than the toddler. That's truth. <laughs> Send us out with a prayer. Okay. All right. Say good night, honey. Good night, peoples. So, obviously, I've been sitting here enjoying a libation, so this is not going to be lengthy because Father Yah makes it clear uh, that there's no drunkenness in service to Yah. Now, I'm not drunk. Uh, I think we can all see that, but, you know, I don't even want to attempt to blur the lines. So, I will pray, and this will be the end of tonight's broadcast. Father Yah, thank you for this opportunity to do this. Thank you for the people within the sound of my voice. Father, there's um, a lot of uncertainty in our nation as far as what's going to happen in Virginia, uh, what's going to happen with elections. Hell, there's a lot of uncertainty with people, what's going to happen with their next paycheck. And so, Father, there is myriad needs in the room. And so I would just pray your hand on that, Father, that you would bring your comfort of the Ruach HaKodesh, that you would bring us peace, that you would impart wisdom and discernment to us to better understand um, your will for our life, to do the things that you would have us do to serve your kingdom, Father, that you would fill us up, set us on fire for you, weaponize us for good to win victories for your kingdom, Father, that you would just support us as we go about the business of trying to put a smile on your face, that we would experience your provision and blessing, Father, your peace, your shalom, 
that you would just be indwelt in us, that you would guide us. You'd make it clear to us where to go and what to do, Father. There are many, many people within the sound of my voice who are hurting for one reason or another, spoken or unspoken, acknowledged or unacknowledged, on the surface or buried down deep. And so, Father, I pray that you would just minister to those wounds, that you would heal us, that you would make us incrementally better day by day as we walk with you. Father, thank you for Yeshua and his atoning sacrifice. Thank you that we are not dead to our sins, that we have redemption, Father. And thank you for the archetype that shows us how to walk out a loving faith and relationship with you. Father, thank you that my life looks the way that it looks. I am blessed, unequivocally blessed, undeniably blessed by your hand, Father. And I thank you for it. And I pray your blessings on everybody within the sound of my voice. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, of Jesus the Christ, amen. Bless y'all. Shalom.